Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mary Newport and I'm grateful for this opportunity to share with you the story of my husband Steve's response to ketogenic therapies. My work as a newborn intensive care specialist was very demanding with many emergency calls to the hospital. Steve worked from home as an accountant for my medical practice and he was always available for our children. Steve made it possible for me to be both a mother and a doctor and I am deeply grateful to him for that. In 2001, at age 51, Steve began to have problems with his memory, making payroll errors, missing tax deadlines, and then he couldn't remember if he'd been to the bank or the post office. Initially, Steve's memory problems were diagnosed as depression. However, his memory continued to worsen, and he was diagnosed at age 54 with early onset Alzheimer's disease. In May 2008, two new clinical trials for Alzheimer's drugs became available, and Steve was scheduled to screen at two different centers on two successive days. The evening before the first screening, by chance, I came upon a press release for a new medical food called AC1202, which was not yet recognized by the FDA, but claimed to improve memory and cognition in nearly half of the people with Alzheimer's who received it. I found their patent application and learned that the medical food was medium-chain triglyceride oil, also called MCT oil. The patent application also included information that Alzheimer's is a type of diabetes of the brain. All cells need fuel, which is usually glucose on a typical diet. But in Alzheimer's disease, glucose is not taken up normally to fuel brain cells. Dr. Suzanne Delamonte and Mark Wand at Brown University in the U.S. reported that the brains of people with Alzheimer's who did not have type 1 or type 2 diabetes showed insulin deficiency and insulin resistance, and they coined the term type 3 diabetes to describe Alzheimer's disease. A small trial and a larger clinical trial of 152 people reported that consuming C8 MCT oil improved cognition in nearly half of the people with Alzheimer's disease who received the MCT oil. I was familiar with this because I had prescribed MCT oil in the feedings of my tiniest premature patients. Ketones are an alternative fuel to glucose during starvation, fasting, and with the ketogenic diet. MCT oil could possibly help people with Alzheimer's because, even when consumed with food, MCTs are partly converted to ketones in the liver and can be used immediately by the brain as fuel. Medium-chain triglycerides are not found in the most commonly consumed vegetable oils. However, coconut and palm kernel oils are the richest natural sources of MCTs. MCTs are also found in the milk fat of mammals, including humans, goats, and cows, and therefore MCTs are present in whole milk, cream, and full fat cheeses. The patent application mentioned that MCT oil is extracted from coconut oil, which gave me the idea for how to help my husband. A few hours after I finished reading about MCTs and ketones, Steve was screened for the first clinical trial and scored a very disappointing 14 out of 30 points on a memory test. Steve did not qualify for the study. The doctor asked him to draw a clock, which is a specific test for Alzheimer's disease. As you can see, he drew a few random circles and a few numbers, and the doctor advised me that Steve was on the verge of severe Alzheimer's. On the way home, I thought, what do we have to lose? and bought coconut oil at a local health food store. I then learned that coconut oil contains about 60% MCTs and estimated that about 35 grams or just over two tablespoons of coconut oil would be equal to the dosage of MCT in the medical food. The following morning, Steve had 35 grams of coconut oil with his breakfast and warm oatmeal. About four hours later, during the second clinical trial screening, Steve scored 18 out of 30 points on the memory test, which was four points better than the day before, and this time he qualified for the clinical trial. Every morning thereafter, I gave Steve 35 grams of coconut oil for breakfast, but also began to add the oil to his other meals since the brain needs fuel 24 hours a day. Steve had many improvements during just the first few days, but here is a visual example of one of Steve's improvements. As a reminder, the slide shows the clock that Steve drew the day before he started consuming coconut oil. 
This is a clock that Steve drew 14 days after starting coconut oil. You can see that it is messy, but the picture looks much more like a clock. This is the clock that Steve drew 37 days after starting coconut oil. It is tidier and there are not as many extra lines on the clock. Steve said he felt like a light bulb came on in his brain the day that he started consuming coconut oil. Here is a list of the many improvements that Steve experienced during the first days, weeks, and months. Steve was no longer depressed. He could finish sentences again. He began to whistle and make jokes. He recognized family members again, and his tremors diminished very quickly. By two months, he was able to tie his shoes again, walk normally, and run again. After three months, Steve could read again, and at nine months, he could remember what he had read. After about six weeks, I made a mixture of MCT and coconut oils, which stayed liquid at room temperature and mixed very well into many foods. After slowly increasing the mixture, by four months, Steve received 45 grams three times per day with meals and 30 grams with an evening snack. He was consuming about 65% of his daily kilocalories as fat and eating much less fruit, bread, pasta, and other carbohydrates, and therefore Steve was effectively on a ketogenic diet. The reason for the mixture was to obtain the higher ketone levels provided by MCT oil and more prolonged levels provided by coconut oil, which could help sustain nearly constant ketosis. Coconut oil also contains lauric acid, which kills many microorganisms that have been connected to Alzheimer's disease and polyphenols that are anti-inflammatory. Here are some of my recipes for adding MCT oil or the coconut and MCT oil mixture. Some foods that work well with the oils are hot liquids, stews, soups, hot cereal, yogurt, cottage cheese, ricotta, and the liquid oils can be drizzled over salad or mixed into vegetables or used to make egg, tuna, or chicken salad. The oils can also be used for cooking at low heat. Steve entered a clinical trial and he did not receive the test drug for the first 18 months. Therefore, the changes he experienced were almost certainly related to the ketogenic therapies. During the first year of the clinical trial, Steve's score improved by 6 of 75 points on a cognitive test and by 14 of 78 points on a test of daily functions. Steve improved so much that he was able to work as a hospital volunteer, which made him feel happy and useful again. Steve's case report was published in 2015 in the journal Alzheimer's and Dementia. Steve improved and was stable for nearly four years thanks to ketogenic therapies. Sadly, Steve passed away on the 2nd of January 2016 after suffering a severe seizure with a head injury and disability thereafter. My job now is to carry out Steve's legacy by increasing awareness of ketogenic therapies for people with Alzheimer's and other medical disorders. Thank you so much for your kind attention.